Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance Reviews here, where we give you reviews based on the technician's point of view. Definitely check out our back catalog. And if you like what you see here, give the video a thumbs up and consider hitting the little bell icon. That helps us out a lot. So I have here, is a, I'm going to call it a classic machine now, because by the time this video is made, this machine will have been 20 years old. And it, it looks older than that to me. It really does, and it did you know, I, I remember selling these things new. Not this exact version, but I'll tell you a little quick story. When I was in high school, I worked in a vacuum shop, and the owner of the vacuum shop had one of these, and when the model changed, they actually went away from the slider height adjustment at some point, and he just kept it the same, because he didn't really see a purpose in changing out his floor model, and his floor model had a melted headlight, which we'll talk about later in the, in the shop section. Um, so that this brings back a lot of nostalgia. Now, unfortunately, the owner of that shop died of pneumonia in the hospital in his 50s, of all things. So God bless him. Um, but the, this is definitely nostalgic for me because I think of Dennis Duffy and all the advice he gave me uh, getting started in the industry. So let's talk about what this is. Now, I've already done a review on the Eureka Mighty Might. I don't have one to show with this, but this was often sold as two vacuums, a Eureka Mighty Might and one of these, or a Sanitaire Mighty Might. And I say Eureka. So Sanitaire is one of those companies that right now is owned by Bissell. They used to be owned by Electrolux and Eureka. And the, again, go Google that if you're interested in the details on that. I don't have time to talk about that. It's really complicated. Uh, but Basically, Sanitaire has always been the high-end version of Eureka. So they are the Cadillac to your Chevrolet. They are your Lincoln to the Ford, if that helps you, or they are the Acura to your Honda. Um, so they always gave you a little bit more. And it, the Blue Line was sold with an extended warranty for home use in the vacuum shop. So this was a commercial vacuum for your home. That's a pretty cool thing. Now, this design dates back a long time. You get into these, what I, I'm going to call them an F and G Eureka Upright. These have been going back, uh, I would say, maybe the late, late 40s, early 50s when they first came out with this original design. And then it's been improved upon during over time. This one is in excellent condition. So one of the things the home version, the blue line, would have had is this cord hook that is a quick release. That would have been a feature. That's something that wasn't standard on vacuums at a certain time. Yeah, I would say more, more and more manufacturers made that standard. But again, this is a 20 year old vacuum based on a much older design. So that's actually a feature uh, to dump the cord. Now, with home ones, uh, they at some point incorporated the slider. In the 80s, they did not have the slider, but here we have a sliding height adjustment. Um, and when you're, you're doing a height adjustment on a, this, you need to raise this up, adjust it how you will, and then set it back down. If you try to adjust up while it's in just the normal position, it's not gonna move the way this is made. Now, the other quirk of this is we have a handle release that allows you to lift up on rugs, or if we hit it one more time, get it to go all the way. It will go all the way low, but again, the bag, it hits the bag, so it doesn't really actually go that low. Now, the back of this, F and G upright. Uh, as it takes Eureka style, F and G. And Eureka F and G was an answer to the Hoover convertible. Again, not trying to go too much into history, which had a bottom filled bag, which meant the bag filled up in the bottom, and then when you turn the machine off, it would all dump back out, or some of it could. Usually it could. So what Eureka did is they made a bottom fill bag and they added this fill tube, which allows it to then be a top fill bag. Um, and this one here is made by Koblenz. This is not uh, is a HEPA rated material. It's much higher quality than the original paper bag. So you replace your t fill tube along with the bag extra manufacturing costs, don't you think? Um, and this is put on and held on by a spring. Um, and the spring fits into a uh, 
we're going to call it like a ridge or a dimple, and that's what makes the seal. Now this isn't the best seal in the world. This is what I would call a non-sealed HEPA machine. So that's your only seal going to the HEPA bag. There's also a gasket in here. There was a little rope gasket. Um, I've, I have taken this apart and serviced this already, uh, but that's something, it's a wear item. So that's something to note. There's also a rope gasket that's a wear item by the motor, which I'll cover in the shop, in the, in the shop section here a little bit later. Now, another quirk to this machine is the wheel placement. You, you can't actually roll it at any angle, so you have, to, you have to do this weird, awkward thing to roll it on its back wheels. So that's very unique uh, to this platform. And I would say Oric might have been the only other one who was like that at the time. And they, of course, moved away from that. Now, the selling point, how this was sold, is that this vacuum would last pretty much indefinitely in the home or at least that was the pitch that was given. Typically, um, this was originally designed to last 1,000 working hours. I would really say 2,000 working hours was really more what we found to be true in terms of its lifespan. Now, unlike a Kirby where the fan has to fight gravity, this fan sits flat, kind of like a boxer motor. So that means it's not going to fight gravity as much in theory and the stuff is not going to have to require as much force to blow it into the bag. Again, all in theory, whether or not that really makes a difference in practicality, I'm not sure that it really does. Notice we see some things we don't usually see on vacuums anymore. Uh, first thing is there's a big metal base plate. This metal base plate, um, it does a couple things. It, first thing it does is allows the vacuum to glide very smoothly on carpet. So I would say that's the primary purpose of this being metal. Um, of course, it's been chromed, so it's just, it's just cheap steel. Uh, but it also adds durability. So this is almost one of the uh, original things that has almost remained unchanged. Now in here, there's a big gasket as well. Now you notice I can get to the belt really, really easily. And that was a big selling point at the time. Um, you know, in 2000, when this was made, lifetime belts were kind of rare. They were only in super high-end machines like Electrolux, like um, Simplicity only offered them in canisters at the time. Uh, things like Mila, things like Sibo, uh, and Linhouse. So they were really almost exotic machines at the time. They were um, almost out of, they were also, all those were also much more expensive than they are today. Uh, at, at the time, I don't think you could get a Mila under a thousand dollars. So to give you an idea, you know, how things were. So this was considered perfectly acceptable. Being able to quickly come in here and change your rubber belt. Now, this brush roller was also one of the selling points is it was metal and you could interchange the brush strips. Uh, and the other thing I want to point out on this brush roller, and this confuses a lot of people, is when people get new carpet, they see that the carpet manufacturer does not recommend beater bars because it destroys carpet. Well, this has these metal ridges. This is the beater bar. This is the true beater bar. It's not a brush roller. I would call this a beater bar. Uh, and this is it. You, there's solid brushes you can, you can go with and other brush roller options. But this, was, this is a VG2. This is the more common of the ones you'd see on machines. And this... Uh, it, it cleans the carpet very well, but it, you know, again, there's some questions whether or not this really destroys carpet. These big metal bars coming and beating the carpet. Uh, I would say it probably pre prematurely wears out certain types of carpets, but it, you know, it certainly cleans it. Um, now, putting the brush roller in is something a lot of people struggle with and putting the belt on with this machine. And I, I've never found it to be a problem. Uh, but some people do struggle with that for some reason. Line this up. This one also, oh, I should point out, this has the metal end caps. The newer ones would have rubber end caps, which help with vibration. Uh, so that's something about this particular version that's a little bit different. And then they just give this belt a half twist and pop that on there, and that's very easy to do. Now this base plate just rocks on like so, and we have clips so very user serviceable uh, you see how thin these wheels are in the back 
And then they got big, like, almost like a royal upright wheels in the front, and then you can see the fan chamber where it sucks everything through the fan, blows in the back. So all right, so we're going to test the working vacuum, and in case you're not familiar with the history of Eureka uprights, they actually did make a toolkit accessory, kind of like a Kirby, except a lot simpler to use. Give you an idea what that looks like. Uh, but basically we have an adapter plate under there, so that's got a nice uh, gasket on it, so we'll be able to get a pretty accurate working vacuum on this, and uh, I tested this once off camera and the results really surprised me. So it's about 1920 on that gauge. And that's really interesting the little bit of shift there is, which shows how efficient the airflow path is on this machine. Um, I was getting steady 20 yesterday, uh, so I think it's really interesting. I've just changed a little bit. I vacuumed my house with this afterwards uh, with that, so that, that, that's how much work. A little bit about the other brush roller option, and I have one here in this sanitaire, and I'm going to do a comparison between the two, but not in this video. So you're going to have to check out the other video, or the link here, if you want to see that. So meanwhile, let's just see how this sanitaire does. And I have already pre-adjusted it to my high pile carpet. And as always, we are going to be running a point of view camera. So if you're not familiar with the pickup test, what we have here is we have dog hair, we have flour, we have cat litter and breakfast cereal. So let's see how it does. This is the hard floor pickup segment. Now usually you see me all throw stuff on the floor and demonstrate it, even if it doesn't work right. With this vacuum, we are not going to do that. As you can see, it has metal beaters on the roller that spin, it has a metal base plate uh, that could scratch my wood floor and possibly maybe even remove it if I do it long enough. So not intended for hard flooring at all. Very old school in its thought process. Now, as stated before, this was usually sold with a canister that you would use on your hard flooring. The other way these were once sold was with a uh, tool plate that would go on there. Let's see how maneuverability is with the sanitaire. around it doesn't have a swivel neck or anything uh, but it doesn't get all the way low so that again it's this this lip is much higher than a lot of vacuums are these days as stated before the sanitaire is fairly high clearance required <laughs> is 
is the inflation of the bag in the rear doesn't allow the machine to lie as flat as when the machine is off. Now I understand that there's that double click there. And I did press it all the way, we'll do one more. And you can see the bag still interferes. Now if you push it manually, you can get there, but it's, it's real hard. Um, and then it just doesn't, still doesn't lie flat. So getting low is definitely a challenge, and it's a good thing these were usually sold with a canister. As stated before, this doesn't get as low as you'd like. The front of it will get under some things, but the headlight and where the rest of the motor sits are just not going to get super low. So that's something to note if you are using this. Again, good thing these were usually sold with a canister. Well, in conclusion, this 20-year-old Sanitaire certainly seems older than 20 years. Uh, I, can't, I can't imagine anybody purchasing this uh, other than for nostalgia reasons today. You, you sure uh, couldn't see any reason for it, especially the modern variants. They're just, they're like the same. They're, they're, there's no purpose in it. Uh, it's not particularly powerful by today's standards. It's not a bad carpet cleaner, as we saw in the pickup test. Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad. Um, you know, and ju just like the Kirby, uh, it's really past its time, and they need to kind of pack it up and go to other designs, which they have. Um, both Sanitaire, before the purchase of Bissell, and after Bissell purchased them, they've gone to modern bypass machines with lifetime belts and easy change bags and everything that was wrong with this, they've addressed in newer models, except for quality. This was made in Mexico. They no longer have a manufacturing plant in Mexico from my understanding. Again, this could change at any time with the new ownership of Bissell. So, you know, you hear the ones with the Chinese motors and they just don't sound the same. They don't seem to clean the same either or even last. So it's, it's really bad, sad to see the brand kind of go into irrelevance now with very few vacuum dealers even carrying this brand anymore. As the margins continue to shrink and the product quality has kind of gone to a dumpster fire, you know, it's a nice look back in a time that was different. Uh, and this was, again, my entry to the vacuum industry was that I used to sell these with the canister. I used to go through about a dozen of them a week. I would assemble them for the customer and carry the canister out in a box and get them bags and it, it was a great time but uh again those early 2000 days uh late 90s days of vacuum sales are long gone and this sort of machine is long gone with it unfortunately a lot of these were thrown away before their time was up because these machines last a very long time so if you see one at a thrift store you see one on the curb, definitely consider saving it and adding it to your collection. Um, give this video a big thumbs up if you liked what we did. If you really liked what we did, check out our Patreon where I do exclusive videos uh, and, thing, and things for our Patreon supporters. We did have a giveaway come up recently. Um, one other thing, turn the bell notification on if you're subscribed. The subscription doesn't mean that you're going to see my videos. The bell notification means that you will. So as always, folks, have a wonderful day.